Hello, my name is Matthew Cruz, and unfortunately I do not have a patient for my emergency care lab practical, um, but we will make do with this hoodie of mine that I stuffed with clothes and gave a face of Trader Joe's dark chocolate drizzled platane chips. Um, so we'll call him Joe for the sake of the video. So this is my patient, Joe is my patient. He presents with pain in his left shoulder. Um, he slipped on ice and fell on an outstretched hand. Um, he already had an appointment scheduled with me today, so he said, you know what, let's just see what Matthew can do for me. Um, so we're going to try to make it better and see what we need to do. Um, I do not have an x-ray machine to accurately assess and diagnose what is going on. Um, the arm is against their body, and he cannot... Abduct his arm, his left arm. Um, so after my assessment, we found that there's swelling, bruising, and then palpable crepitus in the left clavicle. Um, and then when asked, the patient was able to make a fist, and then they had no loss of strength in the wrist. So I made sure that the scene was safe. I mean, he came into my office, which is going to be safe. Um, and then next I'm going to do CMS. So first I would check capillary refill and pretend that these are Joe's fingers, pressing down on the nail beds, waiting for them to redden up again within two to three seconds. And then we would move to radial pulse while his arm is against his body, and then ulnar per pulse, if I can get to it. Very good, and then I would have him wiggle his fingers, if he could, that would let me know that motor is still intact. And then next, I would have him close his eyes, after giving him the instructions of what, what we're gonna do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then he would tell me, with his eyes closed, which finger I was holding which would let me know that sensory was still intact for that upper extremity. Um, perfect. And then, so we got to make sure that once I splint him, um, Joe's CMS remains the same. If not, then I did something wrong. So first, I'm going to use my triangle bandage. And the long side is going to go on the unaffected side over here, Sir Joe. This would be a little difficult, but we'll, we'll do with what we get. Okay. And then, as I stabilize this the left side of Joe, I'm going to make sure to tie it, but tie it in a way that it's not going to be over that left shoulder or even near that left clavicle. I want that pressure on the right side or on the middle. So that's what we'll do. Try to make that evident for you. There we go. And then right here we can check um, pulses, have him wiggle his fingers, capillary refill, and then sensory. Just make sure everything's okay. Um, this situation doesn't call for a SAM splint. It would if the injury was more um, distal, for example, in the elbow or the wrist. Um, but in addition to the triangle bandage, I'm going to wrap my patient with some gauze or whatever I have available to make sure that this arm doesn't accidentally abduct or doesn't move because the whole point of this is to relieve some pressure and stabilize it until we can get some emergency medical attention. And I 
also have a nice assistant who wants to make sure that it's nice and sturdy and the, t the knot is good. Um, and then so the next step is to get Joe into an ambulance or maybe drive him myself to the hospital, call 911, let them know what's going on, um, make sure that whoever's, whoever is the closest um, medical provider or emergency room or hospital is ready for him to give him a diagnosis and um, proceed to the next steps if his clavicle is broken. All right, this is scenario two. I forgot to mention in scenario one that I would not wear any PPE besides the mask um, as the fracture was not a compound fracture. Um, there's a mask mandate. So yeah, the only PPE I would need is um, a mask and then maybe some gloves if I wasn't comfortable touching the patient's skin or saw a weird rash or something of that nature. Um, so for scenario two, um, I have my lovely patient here. Yep. Um, she presents with the worst headache of her life. Um, it started 30 minutes before coming to my office. Um, she has a history of headaches, but not as bad as this one. It's never been like this. Um, her speech was slurred and then the right side appears to be without like movement. She can't really move the right side of her face. Um, so my first step, since I don't need to do the fast assessment per se, because she already is exhibiting signs of fast. Um, and so my first step would be to call 911 and let them know that we have a potential stroke case um, and then after calling 911, then I would investigate further, looking more at her face. If it was just that right side, if it was upper or lower, or if it was all the complete right side, um, then I would go looking at her arms and just seeing if there's any lack of movement, anything like that, and to distinguish a stroke from a condition like Bell's palsy that may have similar symptoms, we would do like the pronator drift test where we would have the patient um, with their palms up and then with their eyes open and then just see if they just pronate and then we would have them close their eyes. And what we're looking for is no movement or symmetrical movement is normal. Um, abnormal movement um, would indicate a stroke, such as like unilateral pronating or just anything like abducting, um, extension of, of the elbow, anything abnormal just on one side. And so after doing that test, we can just monitor their breathing. We could do this even while we do that test or while we're doing fast. Just monitor their breathing, making sure that they're um, not hypoxic, um, that they're getting enough oxygen. And then we can figure out a way to get them supine um, and then loosen any tight clothing that they may have. And if it's a female, we can get a female provider or um, assistant to come in and loosen some of that clothes. And then um, we would be ready at all times to have have them flipped on their side just in case and we would be doing all of this while we wait for EMS to come and save the day.